How it's made, fireworks. Many historians believe that fireworks were originally developed in the second century BC in Luoyang, ancient China. The first natural firecracker is a bamboo stock, which is thought to explode on impact as the hollow air pockets of the bamboo overheat when thrown into a fire. The Chinese believe that these natural firecrackers would drive away all evil spirits. Legend has it that at some point between 600 and 900 AD, Chinese alchemists mixed potassium nitrate, sulfur, and charcoal to produce the first gunpowder, a black flaky powder. This powder was poured into a sacred bamboo stick and later a hard paper tube that formed the first artificial fireworks. Fireworks were introduced to Europe in the 13th century and were widely used for religious festivals and public entertainment in the 15th century. The Italians were the first Europeans to produce fireworks. European rulers especially preferred to use fireworks to captivate the subject and illuminate the castle on important occasions. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel How It's Made. Before jumping into the video, if you are new here, please consider subscribing to our channel. Also, hit the bell icon to get a notification whenever we upload a new video. With that said, let's begin. Early American settlers brought a love for fireworks to the new world. Fireworks were part of the first Independence Day. John Adams said, a gorgeous parade, a bonfire and illuminations from one end of the continent to the other. The spirit of American celebration continues to grow, and in the late 18th century, politicians used displays to attract the crowd to the speech. Although the 4th of July is still an important day, Americans use fireworks all year round to celebrate festivals, special events, and sporting traditions such as the Olympics and the Super Bowl. Raw Materials Modern fireworks consist of a plastic, paper mache, or cardboard shell that surrounds a corrugated cardboard compartment. The small compartment at the base of the shell contains black gunpowder to propel fireworks into the sky from mortar made of iron, aluminium, plastic, or heavy cardboard. The larger compartment contains a mass of a mixture of chemicals that produces light and color when heated. These chunks are known as stars. In American and European fireworks, the stars are mixed with black gunpowder in a cylindrical compartment. Black gunpowder explodes, ignites the stars, and scatters in the sky. In Asian fireworks, the stars surround the black gunpowder in a spherical compartment creating a more symmetrical display. Instead of black gunpowder and stars, the compartment may contain flash powder. This produces a sudden bright light and loud noise. The various compartments of the firework are attached to a fuse made of thread mixed with gunpowder grains. Black powder consists of a mixture of saltpeter, potassium nitrate, charcoal, and sulfur in a weight ratio of 75 to 15 to 10. Flash powder is composed of potassium chlorate or a mixture of potassium perchlorate, sulfur, and aluminium. A star is made up of a fuel that burns to provide heat, a colorant that provides color when heated, and an oxidizer to burn the fuel. Fuels may burn slowly such as charcoal, dextrin, or red gum, producing a dim, long-lasting display. Burning aluminium, magnesium, or titanium creates a fast, bright display. Sugar may be used as a fuel to produce smoke. Colorants include aluminium, magnesium or titanium, carbon or iron, sodium compounds, copper compounds, strontium carbonate, and barium nitrate or barium chlorate. Oxidizing agents are included. They are active oxygen-containing compounds such as potassium perchlorate and ammonium perchlorate. They also contain chlorine which reacts with copper, strontium and barium compounds. The unstable chlorides of these elements provide color. The manufacturing process of fireworks. The materials used to prepare one star are obtained from a chemical supplier and stored in barrels. Upon mixing, the chemicals are scooped from the barrel, weighed and sifted twice on a brass screen to remove the lumps. Place the sifted powder on a large piece of paper and mix gently by hand. The powder can also be mixed in a fixed container equipped with a rotating drum or rotating paddle. These devices should be used with great care so that friction does not generate heat or trap powder debris between moving parts. The mixed powder is placed in a barrel and transported from the mixing chamber to the cutting chamber. Mix water to make a soft dough. The dough mass is scooped up into a wooden mold lined with a large piece of paper shaped like a loaf of bread. The dough is tightly packed into the mold with a mallet. Remove the mass of dough, each weighing approximately 35 pounds from the mold on a workbench covered with heavy cardboard dusted with black gun powder. Bread is cut in one direction to form slices and then cut in the other direction to form dice. Dice dimensions range from 0.06 to 2 inches. Black gunpowder adheres to the damp dice and helps them burn when the fireworks are ignited. The dice are dried on a paper-covered screen. Take a break. The dried dice have become stars. They are transferred to the packing room and placed in cardboard containers. Place a hollow cardboard tube in the center of the cylindrical container and gently pour the stars around it. When the container is full, pour black gunpowder into a hollow tube and remove the tube. The powder fills the space between the stars and helps ignite and scatter them. The paper cap is placed in a filled container now called a break. Five breaks are wrapped in a heavy string, a process called spikes. 
Spikes are made by tying one end of a large spool of spring to a brake and wrapping the string around it. When the cut is completely covered, cut the string and tie it. Some brakes are not spiked but are made in place of plastic or heavy cardboard to withstand the stress of launch. Insert a time fuse into the brake and wrap it in thick paper. The wrap brake is transferred to a pasting room, wrapped in heavy paper soaked in the paste and allowed to dry for about two days. When the paste dries, the paper hardens and becomes strong and tight. Some brakes, known as salutes, are filled with flash powder rather than stars and black powder. Flash powder is mixed incomplete in the same process as the elements utilized to make stars. It is then injected into cardboard containers that are thicker and stronger than other brakes. This allows more pressure to build up before the salute bursts, resulting in a louder bang. These salutations are then spiked and fixed like other divisions. Make the shells now. The dry brakes are moved to the finishing room to be assembled into shells. The simpler shells consist of a small compartment of black powder combined with a single brake. Due to their spherical structure, Asian shells always contain only one brake. Multi-brake shells usually consist of a small compartment of black powder, three or four colored brakes, and the shell is assembled by stacking the compartments together, attaching a starting fuse. Some large shells contain as many as 10 brakes and at least one gigantic shell has been made holding 22 brakes. Ignite the black powder that launches the firework, wrapping them in heavy paper and tying the package together with string. The completed firework is then labeled and stored until needed. Small fireworks include firecrackers, paper tubes holding a small amount of explosive, fountains, paper cones filled with chemicals that release colored sparks, and Roman candles. Some small fireworks contain no explosive at all and maybe as examples include smoke balls filled with a chemical that releases colored smoke and snakes filled with ammonium dichromate which slowly burns and produces a long trail of ash. Sparklers are made by dipping a metal wire in a slurry containing fuel, an oxidizer, a coloring agent and aluminium granules which provide the sparks. Professional fireworks are usually launched by the same companies who make them. If a set piece, a ground-based display that forms a picture or words with colored flares called lances is to be used, the design to be formed is sketched on graph paper and sent to craftsmen who build a wooden frame with thin wooden slats in the form of the design. For mortars to launch, the shells are placed in their proper places. The proper shell for each mortar is loaded in place. The frames for set pieces are assembled and the lances are attached. Large ones are placed in holes dug in the ground or steel drums filled with sand. Smaller mortars are placed in wooden racks. After the show, the crew safely destroys any unexploded duds. The most important quality control factor in making fireworks is safety. Firework factories are protected from intruders by chain-link fences, barbed wire, lock gates, steel doors, and tamper-proof locks. Within these factories, numerous precautions are taken to prevent accidents. Electricity is the greatest danger. A single small spark can set off a room full of explosives. All electrical outlets are located outside the building. To avoid generating static electricity, all workers must wear 100% cotton clothing. They touch a copper plate before they enter a building to remove any static electricity that they may be carrying. Elastic straps with wires trailing to the graphite floor are worn around the workers' calves to drain static electricity away to grounding rods buried beneath the building. All workers halted and all workers leave the building if there is any possibility of an electrical storm approaching. Many other safety measures are used. All work is done by hand to avoid machines that could produce heat or sparks. In the winter, buildings are heated with hot water rather than hot air which could cause an explosion. The buildings are small. All exits have doors that open wide at the slightest touch. And that's all for today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with all your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative videos. See you in the next video. Goodbye.